The coefficient of determination, which in this course is also referred to as r squared, tells one what proportion of the variation in the independent variable explains or accounts for the variation in the dependent variable. For a simple linear regression, the coefficient of determination is just a Carl Pearson correlation coefficient squared. So to do that, the process, the mechanics of it is simply type equals, tap on the cell with the correlation R in it, and then use the caret symbol, that's what that's called, it's usually shift six on the keyboard, here is the same on mine, two, to square it, and you get this square. Now, for a perfect positive relationship, the correlation R was one, R squared is literally one times one, so it's also one. And when the uh, coefficient of determination is one, it means that the dependent variable can actually be predicted without error from the independent variable. They're, they're simply locked together. There, there is no error. Now, the coefficient of determination being R squared for a linear regression means that it will vary from zero to one. Negative correlations will square to be positive values. One other note, the coefficient of determination is also often expressed as a percentage. Let's take a look at this strong positive relationship. R is 0.935. I'll go ahead and square that value. Press to check. And I see that the coefficient of determination is 0.874. The coefficient of determination is telling us that 87% of the variation seen in that independent variable accounts for the variation seen in the dependent variable. Again, this does not mean that the x is causing the y, that the independent is causing the dependent. It does not mean that. We're talking about how much of the variation the proportion of the variation in the x variable, the independent variable, that explains the positive dependent, this, uh, sorry, the dependent variable, the y-axis. It's how much the, of the variation is being explained. And if the coefficient of determination is zero, then none of the variation seen in x is explaining the y. In fact, there is no, no account, there's not accounting for any of that variation. For a for this moderate relationship, here too, I will square it. I get about 31%, 0.31, but 31% of the variation seen in the independent variable explains the dependent variable. This one that's on that moderate to weak borderline, uh, it's really an issue that has to do with sample size. The sample size is a tad small, so it's really probably technically a small a weak correlation. The coefficient is simply equal to tap on that. Shift it squared. Only 12% of the variation seen in the independent variable explains the variation seen in the dependent variable. And for this relationship here, we simply square that. Shift 6, 2, <coughs> really no explanation of the variation. This is why we say there's no relationship here. The variation we're seeing in X just does not explain the variation we're seeing in Y. Now, R squared uh, does not tell you that the dependent variable can be predicted, but it can give you an idea of some sense of the goodness of fit, how well the model fits. That said, R squared should not be used to pick a model based on whichever model, linear, nonlinear, produces the larger R squared, not without some sort of theoretical underpinning to tell one why that difference might exist. So the R squared cannot tell us uh, that we've chosen the most appropriate model. Uh, it 
cannot tell us if we've missed some variables. There's a number of things it can't tell us, but it can tell us for a simple linear relationship, and that's what we're using in this course. It can tell us some sense of the goodness of it and how much of the variation in the x variable uh, explains the y, the independent explains the dependent. There'll be a, a link below to another explanation in the textbook.